We know that there are uh, associations. We have plenty of evidence that there is an association. I think it's fair to say that uh, the evidence base for an association between periodontitis and diabetes is very strong indeed. We've known for many years uh, throughout all of medicine that chronic diseases of aging and complex uh, diseases of health are somehow interrelated. We're rapidly approaching um, having definitive evidence that, that these things are real and that we should be paying attention to uh, periodontal disease as a risk factor for a variety of other systemic diseases. The evidence that we have reviewed is actually telling us that periodontitis is really not only a localized disease, but that actually the body senses, and the body as a whole senses, the presence of periodontitis. So the real question is, uh, can we improve uh, health for individuals in general, especially for some of these major systemic uh, diseases, which have both uh, a high burden on the patient and a high cost to society. Well, this first workshop on periodontal and systemic diseases is a real historical event. It unites the American Academy of Periodontology and the European Federation of Periodontology in one common workshop. And so it's quite an exciting opportunity and one that hopefully will enable us then to give really important messages to general practitioners, both medical and dental and also to, uh, to the public, to our patients. It represents really a key opportunity at a time when we know a lot but not enough to define where we are, uh, how we move forward in this next phase to resolve some of the critical questions. So then we define some mechanisms, and those mechanisms do exist. Uh, the first, of course, is bacteria. Uh, periodontal disease is an infectious disease. And we also know that if you have periodontal disease and you brush your teeth, you get a bacteremia, or you get bacteria in your bloodstream. All of these diseases that we're talking about are inflammatory diseases. And so the second hypothesis is that the bacteria themselves are inducing inflammation, which is, in fact, the link. In fact, we must always remember that periodontitis is indeed an inflammatory disease on one side, but at the other end of the spectrum, it is the bacteria, it's the infection that is driving the inflammation. Uh, we know that if you have low-grade chronic inflammation in the bloodstream, it does tend to predispose to diabetes. The evidence linking periodontal disease to conditions such as diabetes, heart disease, and low birth weight varies by the disease. Periodontal disease does appear to adversely affect uh, glycemic control, uh, measured as HbA1c, that's glycated hemoglobin levels in the bloodstream. There is good evidence that if you treat periodontal disease, you will uh, lower HbA1c levels in the bloodstream, so you will lower the glycated hemoglobin, you'll improve diabetes control. These patients, those with both diseases, periodontitis and diabetes, often suffer from higher risk for cardiovascular disease and kidney disease. And the term that, that's used is attributable risk. So we're looking at how much of the risk for developing cardiovascular disease can be attributed to having periodontal disease. With respect to heart disease, we know there's an association. We have a lot of evidence for plausible mechanisms, but we don't yet have the intervention trials which show that in fact, if you treat or prevent periodontal disease, that cardiovascular disease will be better. We have plenty of scientific information linking oral bacteria are able to travel systemically to this fetoplacental unit and then cause inflammation. Once the evidence has been accumulated and is accepted by the profession, 
I think that our medical colleagues will then uh, make sure that their patients have their dental needs taken care of. The real proof needs to come from intervention studies. The intervention studies are the studies that we really need on, on big numbers and, and diverse populations that show that actually if you intervene periodontally, diabetes outcomes improve. We need to provide clear recommendations to the medical profession that they should evaluate whether there is bleeding in the interface between the tooth and the gums and whether there is gingival inflammation. And in these situations, uh, they should uh, recommend their patients for a dental checkup. Periodontal disease is relatively straightforward to treat. The treatment's accessible, doesn't take too long, uh, and it's, by and large, it's effective. The dentist is actually the health uh, uh, care worker that sees the majority of patients at the time when primary prevention still has a chance to work. So dentists are very special, and I'm proud to be a dentist. The reason is because we have been able to make of prevention a cornerstone of our professional life by using the expertise that we have in changing the lifestyle of our patients.